Hello there, Orla here and welcome to this training series on how to transform your brand in five days. I'm so excited for this training, like I, I just love it, I just love it. I love all things branding, I love all things giving you the confidence in your brand and um, helping you identify your brand purpose and essentially helping you communicate your brand with confidence to your customers so we can encourage them to engage with you more and to take action. And I am so excited that we get to show you this in this training. As you all know, I'm Orla. I'm a coach, business strategist and a Starbucks lover. And I am a brand addict. I am one of those people that is very loyal to the brands that I love and also very passionate about watching how branding has changed and how new brands are emerging and what this means for the market and what this means for you and for your business. So by the end of this training series, series you will have transformed your brand in five days. So what we will have is we will have a different topic every day. So every day there will be a new training video and just take your time. It might take you more than a day, it might take you less, but take your time to understand the training content, understand what it means for you and to implement what is relevant to you and your brand. And I want to show you how to create a brand that appeals to your market and to stand out from the crowd, to stand out from the competition so that people know what you stand for, what it is that you mean and how they're going to feel by engaging with your brand. And most importantly, by the end of this training, you will be confident in who you are and what you offer because 90% of business success is having that confidence to just go for it, to take action when you don't feel ready, you know, to promote a brand that you might be 100% sure in. We want you confident and that's what this training is all about. So how will the content do that for you? So in this training video, we'll look at why branding matters and why it's essential that you see yourself as having a brand. Because you're probably sitting there going, oh, it's just me and my business, or I'm just a small business owner, I'm not really a brand. And I am here to tell you that you motherfucking are a brand and branding matters to you and to your business. In day one, we'll go straight in for confidence in your brand and what you stand for and help you determine that. In day two, we will look at building your brand tribe and who your brand hero is. That's about community building. It's about creating a brand story that revolves around your customer. On day three, we'll look at brand positioning and the collapse of the middle. So how you position your brand in the hearts and minds of your customers in terms of what's important to them. And we'll go deep on day three and look at that. On day four, we will cover the look, the style and the visuals of your brand and how your visuals, your styling can visually represent your brand values and make it super easy for you to communicate who you are, what you stand for and what you do. And on day five, we'll show you how to tell stories and we'll show you how to use your brand to tell your story and most importantly to tell your customers stories and how that helps you grow your brand. So what is your brand? Brand is a term that gets thrown about quite a lot and oftentimes we have mixed ideas as to what that means and we might have grown up with a feeling of what a brand is that might have changed over time but your brand is all about meaning. You know, it's the sum total of all the meanings that all your possible audiences carry around about you in their heads and their hearts. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? Um, it's quite a mouthful because most of the time when we think about a brand, we think about logos. You know, there's my logo. We think about brands that we know really well, like the Chanel logo. We all know what a Chanel bottle of perfume looks like. Um, the Nike logo, that famous tick sign that is famous the world over. We all know a Nike logo, so much so that we can recognize a fake Nike logo from about 100 meters. Apple, the Apple logo and Starbucks, going back to one of my favorite brands, the Starbucks logo. But that's more your branding. 
That's more the visual elements, which we will, we will cover later on in the five days. But your brand, your brand goes so much deeper. Your brand is partly your branding. It's partly your visuals, but it's all these other things. It's everything that your customers and prospective customers, because we want to convert them, think, feel, say, hear, read, watch, imagine, suspect, and even hope about your product, service, or business. Wow. Wow. No pressure then. No pressure during these five days in transforming your brand. But basically, we are spiritual creatures. You know, it's not just about the tangible. It's not just about walking into a shop. It's not just about holding a product or experiences a service. Branding goes far deeper. And your brand is what I think about when I think about your business. You know, do I think you're authentic? Do I think you're high end? Do I think your economy? You know, how do I feel when I go onto your website? How do I feel when I look at your social media? You know, what do I say about you as your customer or prospective customer when I recommend you to a friend? So your brand is very hard to measure because it is a sum total of quite a few things. But to summarize it, and in the world of Jeff Bezos, my good friend at Amazon, we've not met, but I'm calling him my good friend. Your brand is what others say about you when you're not in the room. You know, your brand is like those Chinese whispers when people talk about you when you're not there. And it's so important that you orchestrate that conversation. It's so important that you influence what people say about you, how people feel about you, what they think, what they experience, and that you do that by transforming your brand and building a strong, strong brand. Now, let's look at the benefits of a strong brand. It offers stability, growth potential, loyalty, and longevity. Yes, it is priceless. A strong brand is literally the backbone of your business. It's what stops you from being a commodity. It's what stops you by being judged purely on the prices that you charge. And it is amazing for customer recognition. You know, and this works for both local brands national brands and global brands. Don't think because you've got a local business, it's not going to work. Because if you think of your local coffee shop, you know, the signage on the door will have a certain element of customer recognition. You know, the service will dictate customer loyalty, the consistency. You know, the, uh, the benefits of a strong brand are huge and they also include brand equity. It matters. It's that intangible asset that adds value to your business. A strong brand builds credibility. It attracts the best talent. It attracts the best talent because they want to work for a brand that <clears throat> evokes a warm feeling in customers. They want to work for a brand that is strong. It allows shared value, it shared values and it gives confidence for you as the business owner. It gives you confidence that you are making a difference. But for customers, when customers come into contact with a strong brand, they've got confidence that they know what to expect. It removes the potential of the unknown. So it's so essential that from here on in, you commit to first of all, seeing yourself as a brand. You are a brand. And you determine the type of brand that you want to be. You determine your brand and no one else, but also that we become a strong brand. So we're gonna dive straight into our workbooks here. And we're gonna do a brand health check. And you're gonna do a brand health check on your brand. Now, there's essentially two ways that we measure a brand. One is weak versus strong. So weak, a weak brand means that few people know about it. Few people understand what the brand is about or there are mixed messages. And um, the brand knowledge is limited to a small area or people, or people can't remember the name. Now, when we use numbers, when we talk about a small number of people, well, that's very relevant 
to the business that you're in. You know, small to Coca-Cola mightn't be small to me. Um, and then we want to look at a strong brand. So a strong brand means a substantial, now the numbers will vary, a substantial number know about the brand. So if you've got a local brand, it would be a substantial member of the local community know about your shop. They know about your classes. They know about your product. If it's an online brand, it would be a substantial number of people who are your target market, your potential customers know about you. And of those people, the majority who know about your brand will share a common set of meanings and perceptions about it, which basically means when you leave the room, they're all saying pretty much the same thing or a similar thing. And brand knowledge is high and people remember the name. So essentially, when it comes to weak versus strong, we're always aiming for a strong brand. <clears throat> and the second thing that determines the strength of your brand and your brand health check would be whether it's positive or negative brands. So if we think about a negative brand, it would be people complain more than praise it. So when I first think of a negative brand, sometimes it comes into the mind of Ryanair. When people fly Ryanair, they love to moan about Ryanair. They love to moan about the fact that Ryanair are charging us for extra weight and extra baggage, despite us fitting everything into the tiny suitcase. They change their rules and they often poorly communicate things. They've got a very, very bad reputation in terms of customer care and team care. But they're also very, very well known. So they're a strong brand, but they're also a negative brand. Um, Donald Trump would be another example to certain people, not to everyone, of a negative brand, a very strong brand, lots and lots and lots of people know about him, but lots of people don't say very good things about him, you know? So when you've got a negative brand, you get little, if any, repeat business. Mm -hmm. And you can think sometimes it's those brands that are consistently on discount sites and those brands that are constantly looking for new customers because they're not taking care of their existing customers or they maybe own a market and they monopolize a market, but they're not taking care of it. And when we look at a positive brand, so a positive brand, people love to compliment you on your business. They're mega, mega happy about what it is you do. It's celebrated in conversation. Positive brands get lots of repeat businesses. You know, um, <clears throat> they create an advertising pull for new customers. So they're not out bombarding you saying, buy from me, buy from me. They are attracting new customers with beautiful call to actions. And lots of customers have come from recommendations. So for positive brands, you want to recommend your friends. You want to tell your friends all about this brand and to use it. So when we're conducting a brand health check, I've got a little bit of an example here. So we can see on the bottom, we've got negative and going up towards the top, we've got positive. And on the left hand side, we've got weak and over towards the right, we've got strong. So an example of a weak brand would be South Korea. A weak positive brand would be South Korea. You know, it's considerably um, more favored in global politics than North Korea for a number of reasons. But in the grand scheme of things, not as many people talk about that as they do talk about North Korea. So this area here on the top left-hand quadrant, or it's, it's a nice place to be, but we don't really want to be there. You know, because you're there because you're a positive brand, but nobody knows about you. The bottom left-hand quadrant, nobody, and I mean nobody, wants to be a weak negative brand. So nobody wants to be there. So over on the right-hand side that we get into this tricky, tricky area. So the, the right-hand side, the bottom quadrant, what we have is strong brands who also have negative connotations. So we've discussed Ryanair there and North Korea. So it's any brands that people know quite a lot about that people talk about, that they share a shared set of beliefs and feelings when they think about these brands, but it's not positive. They're not saying good things. So where you want to be, where you want to be is you want to be in that top right-hand quadrant. You want to be a strong brand that when people think of it, they say positive things. Now, there's so many brands here, and I would recommend that you do this 
and you add in as many brands as you want. But we look at Wagamamas, I've listed John Lewis, I've listed Starbucks. There's so many brands that can go in there, absolutely huge. It's certainly not limited to the brands that I like. So I want you to sit down and think of your favorite brands. Where do they fit in this graph? And think of some other brands that you don't like. Where do they fit in this graph? Because I want you to start seeing brands differently. I want you to start seeing brands in terms of how healthy they are. Because you know where I'm going here. The next thing is to see where do you fit in the graph? Now, in your workbooks, I want you to do this, but I want you to consider where you fit in the graph, not only against all sorts of brands, but against your competitors. And I want you to be quite objective. By quite, I mean very objective when you do this. I want you to think, okay, of my competitors, which of these brands are weaker than others? You know, they maybe don't have a strong a following on social media. They don't have a crystal clear message and plot those out. You know, <clears throat> which of your competitors are really, really strong? You know, any that have negative, you can look at their reviews on social media, on Google, on their website, what people are saying about them. And who is your competition? You know, so who are those strong brands up there and where do you fit? And be honest, be honest. You might have a small amount of people saying very positive things about you, which means you're a positive brand, but you're on the weak side, you know? Or you might have lots of people, but maybe you're not getting the reviews that you want. So you might have a strong brand that's a bit negative and we need to get that up there. So head to your workbox and do this exercise. And I want you to remember that no niche is too small to be yours. Yes, so no niche is too small to be yours. And that is a quote by the famous Seth Godin. And um, for those of you who don't know him, he's an absolutely amazing author and he's written so many amazing marketing books. And he very much talks about us niching down and niching down our marketing to serve the customers that want to work with you, that serve the customers that care about you. So don't worry about the people who would never be your customers. You know, so if you're filling this in and thinking, oh, the majority of people don't know about me, don't, don't, don't fill it in like that. Think about your potential customers. Think about the people who could potentially buy from you and do they know about you? And when in doubt, ask Shana. That is one of my best friends. I have a tier of best friends. That is one of my, one of my best friends, Shana. And I go to her because she is the person that will never say what I want to hear. She is my kindest, most supportive friend. I'm so blessed to have her. But when I have a conversation with her and I tell her something, the first thing that she says is, let's play devil's advocate. And she always, always present something to me from another perspective to get me thinking to get me thinking outside the box so when you're looking at your brand and when you're looking at the strength of your brand whether it's strong or weak whether people have got positive or negative associations ask your honest friend ask the friend that will tell you the truth but who genuinely genuinely wants what is best for you and your business so here we are. This is the end of our introduction. And tomorrow we are going to dive straight into video one, or day one rather, where we're going to look at confidence in your brand and what you stand for. And I am so excited to see you in video two. That's all from me. Bye for now.